Brown and Sharp Automatic Screw Machine Operator Training Program. Lesson number eight, controlling the quality of parts. As an operator of the Brown and Sharp Screw Machine, you will need to correct problems that cause variations in part dimensions and surface finish. This training tape will give you the information you need to perform these tasks. The sound you are hearing is chatter. You must learn to recognize this sound as an indicator of trouble. Notice the surface of these two parts. On the part on the right, the surface is smooth, while the part on the left is uneven and rough. The rough, uneven surface is caused by chatter. The primary cause of chatter is vibration. As an operator, you must determine what causes this vibration. The most common cause of chatter is the form tool being positioned below the center line of the part. Check to make sure the form tools have been properly set on the center line of the bar stock being formed. Dull cutting tools are also a cause of chatter. When a tool becomes dull, it will bounce on the stock rather than make a smooth cut. This may cause the tool to overheat and show burn marks at the cutting edge. The only solution to this problem is to remove the dull tool and have it sharpened. Also, a tool that has just been sharpened can cause chatter. For this reason, many operators will lightly hone the newly sharpened tool to remove this sharp edge. A brass bar can be used to hone the edge. Care must be taken when assembling the cutting tool with the tool holder. Chips, dirt, and sludge must be removed before a snug fit can be obtained. The surfaces of the cross slide and tool holder must also be clean when mounting a tool during setup. Failure to clean these surfaces can result in chatter. Your first check after the cutting tool has been mounted is to see that all of the required hold down bolts are used and properly tightened. Any looseness or play will result in chatter. Chatter may be caused by problems that are not in the machining area. A worn spindle bearing is one example. Stock that does not rotate evenly or machine parts that work loose are possible causes for chatter. Improper feed rates can also cause chatter. Check to be sure you have installed the correct combination of feed gears in their proper location. Dirty collets can also cause chatter. If the collet does not hold the stock securely, vibrations can occur. Cleaning the collet is the only solution for this problem. This is the gib adjusting screw. The purpose of the gib is to take any slack or play out of the cross slide. This play can cause chatter. If you feel you have an improperly adjusted gib, notify your supervisor. Do not attempt to adjust the gib until you have more experience. In addition to chatter, other problems can affect the quality of the parts you produce. As you run a job, periodically check the dimensions of the parts. One of these problems is called short feed. If you find the machine producing short parts, check the following possible causes. Normal vibration of the machine may cause the feed adjusting knob to change its position. This may cause short feed. Feeding of too much stock can also cause short feed. The bar stock will bounce back off the stock stop before the collet closes. You must also check the bar stock to be sure it is the proper size. Next, check the feed fingers. They may not have the correct gripping pressure, which could allow the bar stock to slip during the feed stroke. You should next check the collet for proper tension. If the tension is not correct, the end tools will push the bar stock into the collet, causing short parts.
If the colon is functioning properly, check the end tools to see if they are dull or have chip buildup on the cutting edge. If the drills are dull, you will have to sharpen them. Be sure you measure the exact position of the drill before removing it, as the drill must be placed in the same position after sharpening. The remainder of the training tape will show you how to sharpen the basic tools. Drills like other cutting tools get dull. The way a drill is sharpened is important. Use a drill grinder if one is available in your shop. If you do not have a drill grinder available, you will have to sharpen the drills by hand. The cutting edge of the drill is placed against the grinder. The drill is then rotated as the shank is moved in an upward direction. The same procedure is used for both cutting edges of the drill. There are several checks that must be made to be sure the drill is sharpened properly. The angle of the cutting edge is 59 degrees for most drills. One exception is the spotting drill which has a 45 degree cutting edge. A drill gauge is being used to check the angle. Both cutting edges must also be the same length. They can be measured with the drill gauge. Drills with different length cutting edges will dull quicker and drill oversized holes. A bent drill will also drill an oversized hole. It will also run out. You should check your drills by rolling them across a flat surface. Drills must also have lip clearance. This is achieved by grinding away metal from behind the cutting edge. Drills without lip clearance will push the workpiece rather than cut into the metal. A 12 degree angle is common for most drills. If the angle of the lip clearance is too great, the drill will dull quickly and the corners will break away. There will be times when you need to sharpen the cutoff blade. You can sharpen the cutoff blade by hand using a grinding wheel. There are several angles you must be aware of when sharpening the cutoff blade. It is important to have a proper rake angle, relief angle, and side rake angle to ensure a burr-free part cutoff. A seven degree side rake angle is normally used for parts that have a center hole. A 10 to 12 degree angle is used for parts that do not have a center hole. The relief angle is normally 10 degrees. Circular form tools and cutoff tools are sharpened on a surface grinder. The tool is placed in a holding fixture so that after grinding, the cutting edge will be lined up with the bottom of the hole in the tool. The grinder is then set for a three to four thousandths first pass. Grinding is continued until the tool is sharp and there are no visible signs of burn. The rake and relief angle of the tool must remain the same after sharpening or the dimension of the part will change. The form or cutoff tool can then be returned to the machine. This completes your television training tape on controlling the quality of parts. You may watch this tape as many times as you need. After you have finished, return to the operator booklet for your next step.